Hello, this is Benoit. Welcome to another episode of C++ for Arduino. Today I will explain you why C++ programmers don't use NERL. As most Arduino users, you probably learned the C language before C++. Of course you did. It's the way everybody learned C++ today. While learning C, you applied the good practice of using a NULL to designate an empty pointer. What if I tell you that using NULL is considered a cost smell for most C++ developers? And what if I tell you that most C++ coding standards now forbid using NULL entirely? Why do we use NULL in the first place? Very often, we need a way to express that a variable contains no value. In a C program, we do that by declaring a pointer and make it refer to a special address that can never point to something real, zero. For example, we could declare an empty color string like that. But that wouldn't be very clear. That is why C programmers insist on using the symbol NULL to identify an empty pointer clearly. So, to follow the best practices, we should write NULL instead. As long as we stay in the realm of the C language, everything is fine and you can, and should, still use NULL. What most people think NULL is. I believe that most people think that null is defined that way. If null. Indeed, this is the right definition for the C language. It works because the language allows implicit conversion from void star to T star for any T. C++, however, with this strong typing philosophy, doesn't implicitly convert from void star to t star. Let's try. A C compiler accepts these two lines without any problem, but a C++ compiler returns this error. Invalid conversion from void star to const char star. To work around this error, we will have to cast NULL explicitly, something along those lines. Now it compiles, but, but it's ugly, isn't it? So what NULL really is? We saw that the definition of NULL in C++ could not be the same as the definition in C. So what is it? Well, it's very likely to be defined like that. I know it's quite disappointing. The C++ standard allows other definitions, but from my experience, it's often defined to zero or something equivalent. Why does that make a difference? Ok, NULL is not a void pointer, but it's an integer. So what? No big deal, right? Well, it may not be a big deal, but it's very annoying in certain situations. For example, if I write this, and then declare two strings like this, And another one and another string I will pass directly null. So one is constructed from the null pointer in, in, in the color variable and the other I pass null di directly. At first sight, uh, color str1 and color str2 look identical. So if we compare them, they should be equal, right? Let's try.
And of course, we first need to initialize the serial port. So, as you can see, it displays uh, color str1 differs from color str2 proving that the two strings objects differ. Let's print them now. This is for str1 and this is for str2. Strange, isn't it? There are two problems with this definition of null. First, null messes with functions overloading. We saw that the definition of null exposes an inconsistency in the string class. To understand the reason, let's look at a simpler version of the same problem. We declare two functions One taking a constraint star and another taking an integer. Since these functions have the same name, they are overloads, meaning that the compiler calls one or the other depending on the type of the argument. Remember that function overloading is available in C++, but not in C. So, which overload is chosen when I when we call f null. If you are like me, your first deduction was that this line should call the overload taking a sharp pointer. However, after what we saw, you should understand why it calls the other overload. overload. Indeed, as far as the compiler is concerned, it's identical to calling f like that. How is that related to the string problem? Simple. By passing null to the constructor, we just call the wrong overload, the one that takes an integer and converts it to a string. We saw that the strange definition of null pushes the compiler to select the wrong overload. But is it the only problem? Unfortunately, no. It also confuses the type, the template type deduction. Imagine we declare this template function. So our template function takes a type. We'll call it print value. It takes a parameter of type t. And then we specialize it for integers and pointers. First for integers, print value. Okay. And we will just call serial.print. We say it's an integer. And the value is value. Alright. And we will make another specialization. But this time it will be for um, strings, for const sharp pointer. Okay. This one is a string. And we'll add a third one for a void star. I mean, pointer to void. Let me copy paste. 
pointer. This time, since it's a pointer, we need to cast to an integer, otherwise uh, it will not be happy. There. And let's print it as hexadecimal, uh, hex, like this. Okay, so now we will call the function like this, print value 42, which will say it's an integer, print value hello world, should print the string hopefully. And now let's see what happened with new. Let's see. So the integer is okay. The string too. Ah, I have a typo here. Uh, but when we call null, of course, since the definition of null is just a zero, it, it selects the wrong, um, the wrong specialization. So I know that there are better ways to solve this problem. I show you this example because it illustrates the problem with null. With this program, we see that the compiler deduces the template type to be an integer, while we imagine it will be some, some type of pointer. Let's see how this type deduction can affect your program in the real life. So imagine you are using Arduino JSON 5. And um, so, you, as usual, you declare a dynamic JSON buffer or static, whatever. It's not important today. And you try to pass an object. And this object contains um, a key, ID, for example, whose value is, is zero. I hope you can imagine what the JSON document looks like. Look like that actually. Okay. So if you um, if you write something like that, id equals equals null. Probably you intend to see is there an id in the object. But unfortunately, if you could write some error message like that. But if you write this, uh, in reality, the, the compiler will see that. And therefore, for this particular object, it will say that the ID is missing, whereas the ID is here, is it's just zero. Right? So this is an illustration to show you that this has real implication in real life, um, despite my uh, strange example. Uh, from before. So by the way, if you want to really fix this issue with Arduino JSON, you should write something like uh, contains a key uh, ID. That that's the proper sort of way to to test if a key is present in Arduino JSON. Fine. Okay. I told you that C++ programmer banned null from their code base, but what do they use instead? Instead of null they use null PTR, a new keyword introduced in C++11. Like null, null PTR implicitly converts to T star for any type T. So we can write, this works. Unlike null, null PTR is not an integer. So you, you cannot write this, for example. This will not compile. And unlike null, null PTR has its own type. In fact, the type of null PTR is null PTR T. So the compiler makes correct type deductions for templates. Are there any drawbacks to using null PTR instead of null? No unless you, ta you target old compilers that don't support C++11 yet, which is very unlikely. Before wrapping up, I'd like to clarify something I skipped to simplify this article. 
The C++ standard committee knows there is a lot of existing code using null that would become safer if it was using null PTR instead. So, in the C++ standard, they allowed the definition of null of null to be either zero, as we saw, or so both are both are legal in C++ eleven. From my experience, the standard library defines null as zero like this or something equivalent like it say it said in the warning here but not as null ptr compiler writers are also well aware of the problem so they implemented a special case allowing them to issue a warning when appropriate and we saw that in the warning here but le let's see a better example int okay if we call f null i think gcc will show an error let's see uh, at least a warning yeah here it is passing null to a non pointer argument so it's just a warning so the, the code compiles then i have an error because the, the function is not defined but this is something else I could have just said from this whole video, I could have just said don't use null, use null PTR instead. But that's not the way I work. I don't just tell people what to do, I explain why they should do it. Understanding the rationale behind the, the language features is what will make you a great C++ developer. So stay tuned to watch more video like this. And by the way, if you want to practice at home, I uploaded the articles to this website. We'll find the link in the in the video description. See you soon.